ETF versus a stock. So I know we got a lot of new people in the game. Um, we got a lot of new people in the game, and some people always ask, like, Trap, like, what's the difference between me getting the ETF? What's the difference between me getting a regular stock? So I just wanted to use this for example, right? So if we're looking at the S&P 500, like this ETF right here, um, this ETF right here, you would get 500 stocks. So it's 500, really 508 stocks that's in the S&P 500. When you buy this ETF, the VOO, which is what I use for a savings account, you now have exposure to the entire stock market as a whole, right? The difference between that is you get to, you have to pay what's called an expense ratio for this ETF. Let me demystify something for a second. A lot of people often say that when you buy ETF, you have a small percentage in every stock in the ETF. That is a lie. That is a lie. When you buy the ETF or when you buy the index fund, you do not have a small percentage of those companies. You have bought into the fund and the fund breaks down your money in the percentage that it has inside of the ETF. All right, does that make sense to everybody? I'm going to run it back again. When you buy ETF, the misconception that a lot of people teach is that when you buy the ETF, you have a small percentage of money in all of these companies. <laughs> the Black Atlas said the service says it's false, 100%. That is a lie. You do not have a small piece of these companies. You actually don't own none of those companies. You actually have money inside of the fund. So if I had the Wall Street Trapper fund and I have 500 companies and you put your money inside of the fund, you own zero percentage of those companies. You've bought into the fund. And what I do is say, OK, you put a thousand dollars in here. I distribute that money in my weightings of the companies. Right. So for instance, let's say you put a thousand dollars in, you invested a thousand dollars into the VOO, then your money will go as 13% goes to Apple, uh, I think it's 6% in Apple, 7% in Apple, 6% in Microsoft, so on and so forth like that. That's how your money is broken up inside of the ETF when they invest it. You are participating in the fund. You own zero percentage of the companies. On the other side, if you own Microsoft, you own 100% of your share of Microsoft, but you own only a percentage of the Microsoft company. That makes sense? So your shares of an individual company make up a percentage. Am I making sense here? Right? We do, when you own Microsoft as a company, you now own one share, that one share represents a percentage of a company, which is why for me, I don't like you all buying. I know a lot of people hate when I say this. A lot of people get pissed off when I say this. I do not like when you all buy fractional shares because your one share only represents a small portion of a company. Now when you buy a fractional share, you're owning an even smaller piece. You went from owning a peanut to owning a grain of sand. Somebody said, Trap, do you make money on option plays on VOO? I've never traded the VOO. I've, I've never traded the VOO. I use it as a savings account. Right? So a lot of people get mad at me. Trap, why would you tell people not to buy fractional shares? Because I'd rather you save than invest. All right, you save the money. All right, you want to buy a share of Microsoft? Save until you got enough money to buy Microsoft and then invest in Microsoft. But first, I need you to have a $1,500 put up for the emergency like we always talk about. Have your $1,500 up for the emergency and then you start saving to invest in Microsoft. Buy you one share of Microsoft, not the fraction of the share, because when the stock run up like crazy, you, you ain't, you like, dang, I made 15 cents. No, 
say it to invest. Say it to invest. Here's why I want you to say it to invest. Because the people who, it's about to hurt people's feelings. When you, when you buy the fractional shares, the broker is getting paid for you buying the fractional shares more than you're making off the company. They getting paid for the transaction regardless. You feel me? When you buy the fractional share, the broker is getting paid from the transaction regardless. Whether you buy a whole share or a half a share, they getting paid for the transaction. So if they're going to get paid for the transaction regardless, why not just wait till you can afford what you need to afford and get the whole share? You do not get better dividends from owning fractional shares. How are you going to get a better dividend from owning a fractional share? It's the same thing. Whatever, the, whatever percentage of the share you got, that dividend is broken down to that as well. They're not going, if the stock pays a dollar dividend for owning a whole share, you're not going to get paid a dollar dividend for owning a fractional share. You probably won't get paid 15 cents. So it's better for you to save to invest. And let me put y'all on something else right quick. You do not need to have the fear of missing out because the market ain't going nowhere. You don't have to fear missing out because the market isn't going anywhere. The dope part about the market is one of the things I like that Jim Cramer says is there's always a bull market somewhere. So, yeah, you might miss you might miss one thing. But guess what? There's 8,000 other stocks. And here's the dope part about it. Yeah, you may miss out on this stock running 400%, but guess what? There's some stock right now that's really, really good that you're not paying attention to that's being discounted. So instead of focusing on what you miss, go find a stock that's real quality, that's really doing, that's just not having a good year, but it's a great company. Go find a stock that's quality, that's having not so good of a year. Make sure it's lined up. Make sure you did the fundamental research. Make sure you have your investor SOPs in place. Go buy that company. Why is it a discount? Sit back and let the market turn and then watch how that stock triple your network. Ask me how I know. Because... In 2022, when I was beating the market in a recession portfolio, but NVIDIA was down, Tesla was, I mean, NVIDIA was down, Apple was down, Microsoft was down, Facebook was down. I was in my primary portfolio loading up. I got, I got 600, 800. I think I may have 1,000 shares of NVIDIA right now. That's the biggest one in my primary portfolio. I have... A thousand shares of Google. I'm lying. I got 800 shares of Nvidia in the in the primary portfolio. I got a thousand shares of Google. I got 700 shares of Amazon. 700 shares of Meta. And here's what I said. I said Amazon is at 89 dollars. Why are we why are we thinking about this? Why are we thinking about this? The tech sector the tech sector is just getting beat up. But the quality of the companies didn't change. Facebook is $89. Why, why are we second guessing this? It's the second biggest digital media company in the game next to Google, but it got more users than anybody. 2.8 million people are on the Facebook ecosystem. Why are we second guessing this? It's $89. From 2022 to now, the stock is up 200 and some percent from 89 to $400. Why were we second guessing this? I'm going to punch my dog Ian up right now. My dog said, Facebook did. I said, oh no, partner, you tripping right now. But it's okay for us to have difference in opinions. 
I said the same thing with Netflix. I said, yo, the stock went from $700. Watch this, Jose. Ne that same year in 2022, Netflix went from $700 to $200. I said, why are we set? Do you think? Do you think Disney is going to overtake Netflix? There's no rated R movies on Disney. Let's be real. Disney is not putting dope on there, drugs, alcohol, sex, cursing. None of the stuff that adults like to watch is not going on Disney. I said, yo, why are we, why are we running away from Reed Hastings, Mark Zuckerberg, why are we running away from Amazon? Yes, tech is taking a beating. In that year, I had no tech sector, no tech stocks inside the recession portfolio. Guess what, though? I was buying them like crazy. I was buying like crack in the 80s. Me and my daughter, we was buying them like crack in the 80s. Guess what everybody was saying? Uh-uh. I'm not. How long we think they're going to stay there for? Yes, Apple has put a blockage on you getting Facebook. I said, but he going to figure it out. Here we are. Here we are. NVIDIA went crazy. Now, I'm going to be real with you. I didn't know they was going to do that. I didn't know they was going to get into the AI space and go crazy, but I knew it was a good chip company. Meta, I knew that was going to shake back. And I talked about it. We can find an episode. He did two things that said, oh, I said, oh, it's done. He did, he did two simple moves. He got on the TV and said, we're not going to spend $10 billion a year on ARV, or we're going to spend $3 billion. And he added the checks for $14.99. The first month alone, he added $700 million to his bottom line. Stock went crazy. Amazon did one thing. They added a tier to go ad free. Stock went crazy. And now, because you missed that, now you're saying, I'm waiting for them to pull back. But you had the perfect opportunity. I'm going to say something, I'm going to move on from this. As an investor, as an investor, don't let a good crisis go to waste. 